Let's practice predicting the number of peaks, also known as signals, in a proton NMR spectrum. So before we get started, I just want to put a little, like, do some definitions on here. So first of all, the word proton we're using to refer to the hydrogen atom in these molecules. That's just the, the notation that we use when we're doing NMR. Also, um, in this video, I'm going to be talking, or I'm going to be using the term chemically equivalent Protons or hydrogen atoms that are chemically equivalent all collectively together will generate one peak or one signal in the proton NMR. Chemically equivalent protons are ones that are in identical bonding environments or identical bonding situations. For example, if we look at this first molecule, pentane, uh, and I have the different portions of the molecule labeled with A, B, and C, we can see that the protons that are um, on A and the protons that are on this A, they are in identical bonding situations and they are chemically equivalent to each other. The protons, the three protons that are on this carbon are at the end of a five carbon chain. The three protons on this carbon are also at the end of a five carbon chain. So these three hydrogen atoms right here, or three protons are exactly the same as these three over here. There's a few different you know, tricks that we can use to help us find chemically equivalent protons, such as looking for a plane of symmetry in the molecule um, and then just comparing the left side and the right side of that plane of symmetry. The plane of symmetry thing is something that you want to be a little bit careful for or careful when you're using. It doesn't always work perfectly but it's certainly a good starting point. So if we go back to the plane of symmetry concept again, we can see that protons B and B are also identical to each other. These are protons that have a methyl group on one side and a propyl group on the other side. So if we're looking at B, there's a methyl group on the left and there's a propyl group on the right. And for this B, there's also a methyl group on one side and a propyl group on the other. So these guys are identical to these guys. They're in identical bonding situations. And then C in the middle is unique. Let's take a look at the... the um, next example, we have this isopropanol molecule. If we want to, you know, start by focusing on the plane of symmetry, the plane of symmetry would be right here through the molecule. And the plane of symmetry does make it easy for us to see that these two methyl groups are identical to each other. So we'll label them with a little a. These little letters are a pretty common way that um, chemists use to identify the equivalent protons. Sometimes they'll use the notation H for hydrogen with a subscript A to refer to these guys right here. We go back to our plane of symmetry. Uh, we don't want to forget this hydrogen right here. I'll use that notation, put a little B after it. That's going to be a third hydrogen. And then don't forget there's a hydrogen on carbon number two. We'll call that guy C. Uh, in terms of the order in which I number these, so calling these guys up here A versus calling this one A, that doesn't matter at all. All that we're trying to do is come up with the number of different types of protons. Uh, three types of protons means that we're going to get three signals or three peaks in this NMR. Here's our next example. Look for the plane of symmetry because that's always a really good starting point. And the plane of symmetry helps us identify um, the different types of protons. Any carbon atom that, that um, has the plane of symmetry passing through it, those hydrogens are most likely going to be different from all the others. So the hydrogen that's on this carbon right here, that is one type. And then we've got a hydrogen out here. That's a second type. So those two are different from each other. Uh, with the plane of symmetry, again, thinking about this guy, um, we've got these guys, which are the same as these guys. These are um, hydrogens that are in the ring. that are like directly adjacent to that chlorine. So we could label those C. And then the next one's D. C and D are not identical to each other just due to their different um, relative position to the chlorine. It makes them different. So this one would have four signals or four peaks. So I'm using all different kinds of notation here. Uh, for our next example, um, when we're looking for a plane of symmetry, there is none in this molecule. And that just simply means that all of these hydrogen atoms are unique. So this one is also going to have four peaks. For our next example, we have, again, we, um, well, we do have a plane of symmetry for the ring. So the plane of symmetry for the ring right here, like this. Remember that this bond is free to rotate. Um, so we do have a plane of symmetry right here. And that means for the ring, we can, we can go like this. 
Um, that was a mistake. A, a, B, and C. So these guys and these guys opposite the plane of symmetry are identical. And then we have C down here at the bottom. There's also a hydrogen right here, so don't forget about that. And then last but not least, we have our ethyl group. Each of those are unique. E and F. One, two, three, four, five, six peaks for this guy, one for each type of hydrogen. And it looks like we have two more examples um, for this one. We do have a plane of symmetry right here in that position. Hydrogens that are on carbons um, that has the plane of symmetry passing through them, they're gonna be unique. So there's one type right there. Um, and then here's our second type, and here is our third type. So that's three peaks. And then uh, our last example, cyclohexane. For this particular molecule, we have a plane of symmetry here, but also here, and also here, and here, and here, and here. We have like a ton of planes of symmetry. All of the hydrogen atoms in this molecule are all exactly the same. So there's only going to be one peak or one signal for this molecule.